Welcome to the channel, Mazbro here. It's probably your first time here. It is a new channel after all. Uh, first of all, obviously this video is really long. I'm sure you can already tell, but it is the most comprehensive uh, villager breeder automatic crop farm plus villager transportation setup system out there or at least I believe that it is I, I, I've looked everywhere uh, I think I looked everywhere and there's uh, I mean I've learned a lot from the ones that are on you on YouTube I mean I, I have they're great but there's one problem with the villager breeder systems in that you actually have to move the villagers 160 blocks ish away in order for them to actually produce more which is tedious and with this system you don't need to they're all they're all gonna be stuck in that cell right behind me and they're gonna breed amongst themselves which makes the breeding process even faster and best of all uh, we're gonna set up an underground system where we can actually transport our villagers into uh, whatever farms that you're trying to make whether it be an iron golem farm a food farm although you already have one up there so I don't know why you need another one or um, your trading outposts or to their doom it doesn't matter it's up to you um, you can do whatever you want with it so before we start uh, with this super long tutorial totally worth it as I said uh, I'll show you a demo first okay in a nutshell this guy farms gives food to this guy he never receives it it gets uh, inside this minecart with hopper and then this minecart with hopper goes down to this very very simple redstone system that will feed the villagers in here food and they will breed with each other the more villagers are in there the faster they breed which is also a benefit of this system and you can have up to 98 extra villagers depending on how many beds you have so just build more than this and, you and you'll be fine and this magic button here when you click on it, it'll send one minecart out, pick up one villager, go wherever you want it to go, and eventually it'll drop uh, one of the villagers into these stations. So let's just do that real quick. So first one, clicking that one. As you can see, one villager is pulled out. Yep, coming here, and he should land in this spot right there. Great, perfect. Now we'll go on for the next one, and we'll just click that as well. And we go back here. We see the villager coming and yeah you get the point so he's in there but uh no no don't go there don't go there okay and let's just do the third one as well before we start this tutorial so if you like what you see so far guys I'd appreciate if you could just uh don't don't okay if you could just drop a like and maybe subscribe it would really help a new channel so all right let's start it's gonna be long so take your time rewind it if you need to but it'll be worth it you need this on your build all right let's go guys This is the most common villager, well, they're, they're breeding right now, that's great. This is the most common villager setup that we see online, and uh, I learned mines from Impulse SV's channel. It's all great and all that. Um, his setup is a bit different. The only difference is the farming section is huge. It's, it's larger. It's a, tri it's, a, it's a diamond shape. Now, the issue here is, is sometimes they will fail breeding. Like, you can see right there, it just failed, right? So the reason why this can fail is that... Well, see these beds, one, two, three, four. Villagers will only breed if they see an empty bed that's unoccupied by another villager. So in this instance here, uh, these two villagers, they're occup occupying two of the beds already, and the, the farmer might be trying to occupy another, and every newborn baby will try and occupy the other one. So that's already four beds occupied, and, and that's why you can see them fail at breeding. When you see the hearts and you see the sort of angry emojis popping up that pixel art like that like so that is when um, they're not breeding and this probably happened because we have a villager stuck here somewhere let's just check and see um yeah see this one is stuck this one is stuck i'll explain to you the mechanics so i want you guys to understand how this works this will make life so much easier for you so in order for a villager to no longer try and occupy a bed it has to be really far away and the reason why I don't like this setup is you have to make this really long tunnel to move the villagers away so that these guys will continue to actually breed some more. Now let's see our block number over here. We're at block number five, 540, give or take. And let's see where this villager here that is stuck, that is stopping the breeding is located. He is, he is at block number 670 that's 130 blocks away and still they will not continue reproducing so what we can do here is we'll help things out by giving a little nudge okay now he's uh over 140 blocks away and if we go back to our breeder i'm sure you can see that he will they will actually produce the next villager all right let's see 
So, okay, they're making love, and let's see. It should work, it should work, it should work, because... Okay, still no, see? Lots of issues running into this. So, that's why I don't think this is very efficient, this method right here. Um, well, I mean, if you want to make a transportation system like that, that's fine, but... The second alternative to doing a horizontal transportation system like that is to make it vertical vertical like so and it's a long way up guys it really is um it's giving me a headache just going all the way up i mean imagine imagine having to take your first villager up here that's that's a big hassle to be honest and although it does work it does work and you uh, but the babies have to go through this you know that scary drop, 140 blocks down, this water will save them, and uh, I tested it, and they do reproduce as, as long as they are this far away. But still, for me, it's just, um, I, I, I wanted to find a more efficient way to do it. And that leads me to experiment number, well, these that failed, this failed. This one, on the other hand, worked wonders. This one was amazing, so... This one, it just works, it works. And we're gonna improve on this design just a little bit. So this one will produce as many villagers as you have beds. Now the maximum number I believe is 100 villagers. You can't have more than that in an area if I'm not mistaken. And I think that probably includes the two villagers above. So you'll produce uh, 98 underneath, 100 minus two, 98, simple math. Uh, so that's why on the start of the video when you saw my survival world why did i make that villager breeder so big because i had to fit 100 beds in okay so the only weakness with this is we don't actually have a way to transport the villagers out easily and you know we want to target where they want to go let's say you're making an iron golem farm or you're making whatever farm you want or you just want to send them to their doom somewhere it's up to you but it would be nice to have a transportation system set up for that and I'll make it easy for you guys, and I'll, I'll show you guys everything. So uh, hang around, and uh, if you can, it would be nice if I could hear you guys on the comment section. Maybe leave a like. It would really help out starting a new channel. I don't like asking for likes or subs. I don't do that on my other channel. But starting out, it ain't easy, so please do help out. Anyway, uh, let's go on to the actual tutorial. Okay, let's start off with the materials that you'll need for each phase of this build. Now, there's some redstone involved, but I assure you it's very easy, and the materials is also very easy to make, and the build is also very easy. So we'll start with the transportation system. This will be the system that you use to move your produced villagers to their new workstations, or to your trading hall, or to your new iron golem farm, whatever you may need them for. Now, all you need here is um, some activator, just one activator rail, a couple of powered rails, regular rail as well, just a few, I guess. You'll need one dispenser, one minecart to transport the villagers, what, uh, a few levers, maybe one or two or three. This is just to activate the powered rail, and then you'll need one stone button. Now, for your redstone dispenser machine, this is basically what you use to feed your villagers underneath. Now, you'll need one sticky piston, um, three hoppers, you'll need two observers, one redstone comparator, and one dispenser. Right, simple enough. And for the villager breeder part, you're gonna need four villagers total. You're gonna need a bucket of water. Uh, two would be ideal, it would make your life easier, but really you only need one. Lots of carrots. The more, the merrier, to be honest. The more carrots you have, the faster the breeding process will be, but you don't need to have 64. Uh, but if you, can, if you have four stacks, five stacks, even better. Okay, so you're, you're gonna need one minecart with hopper, one rail, one composter, one chest, eight birch, eight, any trapdoors, eight of them, and you're gonna need a lot of beds. Um, well, if you only have 10 beds to start with, use 10. But if you have 90 beds, use 90 beds. If you have 98, use 98. But you don't need any more than 100, that's for sure. Um, you'll need some dirt. This is for the farm bit. And then you'll need basically a lot of building blocks, any building block of your choice, a couple of oaks, uh, a couple of stairs, and a couple of slabs. And finally, you'll need some form of lighting. You can use torches, it doesn't matter. But since we're in creative mode, let's use sea lanterns. So for this build, we're going to make a villager breeder that can handle 35 extra villagers. But I'll show you how you can expand that easily. You can make it 100. It's, it's a very simple process, uh, believe me. But first things first, let me just first note that um, we're actually going to need some things built underground. So please keep in mind that this yellow line here, 
basically it's your ground level so if i were to put grass blocks so just so you understand this is where your normal terrain or the ground of your building should be so everything that i built on this yellow block and underneath this you can build underground if you want but if you want to have it exposed as well that's up to you just keep in mind that things on this yellow line or under can be underground i mean the, the whole thing can be underground to be honest but yeah just it, it's it's worth mentioning okay remember you don't need to build these blocks that i'm showing you right now you don't need to um, but the basic structure our shape it's going to be seven blocks wide so that's one two three four five six seven now hang on hang on wait just a second wait just a second there okay i'm not sure if you noticed but i actually tried to count to seven and there was only six blocks okay if you didn't notice your math is just as bad as mine now fortunately this build is so flexible that you can build this as wide as you want or you can build it as slim as you want in fact you can actually make this building only five blocks wide three blocks wide it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter so it's flexible and the rest of the tutorial is valid so i just don't want to redo this it took a long time now um, I would actually recommend that you actually build this one block extra to the left. This will provide you with better symmetry later on, and you'll see why. Okay, so yeah, let's move on. Let's just pretend that never happened. All right. Okay, so before we start, we'll actually want to build our villager holding cell. Now, that's very important to do first. Um, I'll show you why in a bit, because we actually need to place some rails and... Well, we have to do that before, otherwise we'll be obstructed. So uh, from this corner block, just count one and two, and we'll start building here. One blocks, two blocks, three blocks high. Make that level with the surface area, which is again indicated by this yellow concrete layer. And we'll want to put one piece of rail over here like so. And then you'll want to want to put one glass block above this rail. It'll float over ground like this, which is not a problem. And then you'll need your eight birch trap doors, any trap door once again. So you'll want to cover this area up. So we click here, fold it up and can get a little bit tricky, but OK, that works. Uh, put one more on this side. And finally, we put one last one on this side over here. And lastly, we'll want to do the same up top, but we can leave this one open. So the end result will look something like, whoops, something like this. All right, golden. And we still have our rail in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to remove these blocks here, guys, just to make it easier to see. So that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so what we want to do now is we need the rail system working. I'm also going to break the blocks on, these, on this side here, actually. Um, you know what? Let's just leave the blocks in the back. I mean, I'm sure you get it. Okay, now follow me carefully on this step, guys. So, okay, we'll want to remove the block in the middle. And we'll actually want a solid block here. It can be a glass block as well. You know what, let's just use the blue one. It's so much easier. You know what, we'll, we'll use glass on this side. That one's fine, that one's fine. But you'll want to use a solid block over here. Why? Because we're going to want to use powered rails on that side so here's what we do it's pretty simple all you need to do is pl place one rail here a regular one is fine since this is going uh, downhill but if you intend to not go downhill from there well you have to go downhill so that's fine you can use normal rail there you can use a powered rail just for a show that doesn't matter and then you'll want to put one powered rail on this side like so all right that's almost done that's almost done all we got to do now is um just add a few more blocks here depending on where you actually want your minecart dispenser to be it can be as far as you want so just for example's sake we'll just put it all the way there and we'll put uh, these rail tracks over here and you'll actually want to cover up the block on this side like so and the last step is to actually put your dispenser on this side so we'll put one there and you're gonna need your minecart here as well uh, I'm gonna take a few uh, j just to make the example easier so put the dispenser like so whoops nope put it from the other side like so because it needs to face this way and then you'll need your button to activate it so we'll put the button yeah we'll just put it on top of the dispenser that's fine but you can do it however way you want 
In fact, if you want it on ground level uh, so it doesn't show, you can put a block up top over there. And you can put one of uh, these buttons here. And, well, that should do it. So we'll just put in the minecarts into the dis dispenser. You can only have uh, nine maximum, but that's fine. So let's give it a test. Let's see if it works. Uh, we'll just test one out real quick. So we'll put a villager in here and we'll activate... Oh, wait, wait, wait. You need your lever first, guys. So put that lever on to here. That should activate all of the rails. And it's time to show some magic. No, it was supposed to catch that guy. Well, that was a flop, but I have no idea why it didn't work the first time around, but it worked the second time. I think it just has something to do with the fact that there was only one villager in there. So the minecart had less of a chance to catch villagers, but let's put a few more in. Okay, like so. So now we have four. And let's see if we still have the minecart in there. Okay. And this time, it should work. Voila, it worked. Great. Okay, so that part is your transportation system. Easy enough. But how do you actually trap a villager somewhere? Now, there are several There are several ways to do that. And I'll just show you some examples. So, uh, okay. You'll want to use a solid block. So you don't actually want to use, for example, glass here. Because, again, you're going to want... Um, you're going to want this to be solid, right? So here's what we'll do. We're going to... We're gonna send the villagers a little bit. Eh, here is fine. Here is fine. So normally, if you if you want to set up a trading hall or a profession table, or if you want to put them in an iron golem farm or whatever it is, you'll want to put them sort of in a holding cell like so. So in order to do this, I mean it's really simple. What you can do quite simply is just drop them down here along with your um, along with your cart as well. And you can have more rails here for later on to work with. And basically, all you got to do is just, well, um, it's easier to just show you. And I'll switch that on again. It'll pick up one villager. <laughs> Damn it, I forgot to put my rails here, man. I, I don't think I'm going to cut that out. See, it's, it, it just... It's, it's just good to show that everyone's human and like I'm just stupid most of the time so one more time one more time okay up you go and there you have it so you have it trapped on this side and that makes for a lot of possible future builds now if you're not uh, familiar with things like this you don't need to worry about this just have this rail bit set up and just leave it as is you'll figure it out later but believe me you'll want this just just believe me because like i i regret it not setting this up on my survival world early on okay back to our setup and what we want to do now is or you can do later of course is we just want to get um the villagers out of our building area later on so I mean, do this however way you want or wherever way you want to go. But just for this sake of the tutorial, let's say we want to send the villagers here later on. Keep in mind, this is customizable. Every time you want to send it somewhere else, maybe you want to send it over there or to the edge of the world over there. It's up to you. As long as you have this, uh, this rail system set up, I mean, you're golden. Okay, so let's start working on the main part of the building. Again, above yellow line means overground, right? Overground level. So I'm just going to fill in everything in on th this side. We're going to put walls around it. And we're also going to put floors um, on the middle section. So I'm going to put yellow blocks as floors. And I'm going to put these blue blocks on the side. Um, well, they're basically the walls. Okay, so let's start filling in the floors on this side. Um, you can use full slabs, you can use planks. Uh, well, planks are cheaper, so you might as well. So I'll just fill this in and I'll be back with you right after I'm done. Okay, so I've filled all the slabs in and do notice that I actually left three blocks empty here. That's one, two, and three here. So we're going to need this so that um, the villagers can actually travel down on this uh, rail system here. You don't want to place the beds too close. This is time to place the beds, but you don't want to place them too close. Why? Uh, if you place them too close, um, they'll be able to actually sleep on it. But if you make it uh, far enough, they won't actually sleep on it. So let's set the time to midnight and see if it's if it's at least one block away, they won't sleep. But for example, if I do this, the guy will sleep on it. And when he wakes up, 
he's gonna walk somewhere else, so yeah, I'm gonna have to kill him now. So let's just try that one more time. Again, be mindful to at least leave one block away so that the villagers that you are breeding don't sleep outside of their designated beds. So as you can see, they're not sleeping and I'm gonna lay my additional beds, um, you know, while they're trying to sleep just to prove that, you know, they're not gonna try and sleep on any of those beds. Okay. Now we have that almost set up, and yeah, so it just looks like this huge comfy piece of cushion, so nothing wrong with that, of course. So we're gonna set the time today again, and we'll continue on. Okay, so now we're gonna set up our redstone dispenser system. Basically, this is a system that's gonna actually give the food to the villagers. I haven't found a non-redstone alternative, but... Yeah, it, this works great, so let's let's just use that. So uh, just, uh, you know, stand on some temporary blocks here, uh, face the rail, place one, two, and three blocks, destroy the first two, and then you can destroy these as well, and just look up, and just, uh, if, you, if you just right click, like I did just now, the comparator is, uh, the dispenser is gonna face the wrong direction. So what you're going to want to do is hold your left shift button and then right click. And that way the dispenser will face downwards. Very important step. For the next part, we're going to want to jump on this block here and just jump and place your sticky piston like so, so that it faces upwards. Okay, so actually we won't need this one uh, trap door, so you can keep that. That's for you. That's fine. All right, so put one block here and temporarily put one block here. The only reason we're putting that block there for now is so that we can click here and we can see that this arrow on the observer faces that side. The arrow needs to face that side and the face, the observer's face needs to face this way. Okay, next. Oops, uh, I'm not supposed to destroy that, but we'll just put that back on straight away. And we're going to want to put our redstone comparator facing that way. Okay, we're only one step uh, from being done here, to be honest. And okay, the next part is simple. Just temporarily place a plank, uh, any block ahead of you, and then just shift click with the observer and it should look something like so. So a brief recap, this faces uh, oh, it's facing this way, but the arrow is facing that way. This observer, the arrow is facing that way, but the face is facing this way. The comparator triangle is facing that way, and this dispenser is facing downwards. You can see the hole down there, and the sticky piston should face upwards. Okay, so let's give it a test. So we're gonna put the bread in, and if this works correctly, it should chug all the bread out. And as you can see, it's chugging out all the bread. Uh, well, some will go out just a little bit. That's fine. That's not an issue. The villager, the villagers will pick it up, and that's just collateral, to be honest. It doesn't matter. So out of 64, we have three uh, that were misplaced, and the sticky piston will retract as soon as this dispenser is empty. Golden. So this is working fine. Uh, we, you have the transportation system set up down below and we have the dispenser system for food set up and now for the easy bit the farming bit this is the easiest part well we can actually break this block if you want but i mean up to you up to you so the next thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna uh, build up to the next floor and it should go as high as this guy here so this is basically the roof of things so we'll build up from this corner one two three four that should do it and remove that for now and we'll just continue on building the frames to each corner okay great and you'll end up with a shape like this this is absolutely fine now the what 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 one two three four I love that scene. Okay, that was just me realizing that I screwed up totally. But um, I'm just gonna leave that in. <laughs> I, I love that reaction. It was it was it was sad. Okay, uh, pick up your dirt blocks. Pick up your dirt blocks, and we're gonna start and putting the farmland over here. So put that over on this side, and you'll actually want a few pieces of stair as well. You only need two to be honest. So we'll just pick quartz stairs you just pick up some of that it's time to get your bucket of water uh, ready and you might want a slab yeah so grab a slab as well 
and or a trapdoor a trapdoor can substitute for that too so we're gonna start by sorting out our water source here uh, we want the water source done first so that we don't uh, screw oh, sorry sorry about my cat so we don't screw up the redstone underneath so let's start by putting a, a little spot for water here in the corner so we can easily achieve this by well, let's just place some slabs over there shift click here and you have this little corner where you, you can actually fill it with water so we're gonna pick up some uh, dirt here okay and we'll just put this over on this side uh pick up your bucket of water and fill it in with water on this side great so we'll do the same on the opposite end uh, we'll break one block over here and just put some temporary blocks over here put a yeah put that stairs over there and finally just uh cover that up a bit and then put water on it great perfect so now we can start filling the rest of the spots with land And let's just leave this area as is because we do need to put in the hoppers before we finish this farmland. So what we're going to do here later on, the villager will be standing over here, right? He's going to stand over here, right? And we're going to wall him in and we're going to have a minecart with hopper over on this block here so that a villager over here later will actually try and give food to him. It gets intercepted and we'll set up hoppers to send it into this dispenser. Um, well, you don't have to worry about how that works. Um, just follow these steps. Okay, so just to keep things simple, just break this block. I'm just going to put glass just to make it easier to see things. So we're going to put another block of glass here. And on this block here, on top of the dispenser, just shift click and put a hopper like so. And then do the same and shift click from this side. Make sure you click here like so. Why? Because we want this hopper to face that way. If you did not shift click, the hopper would face down like this and it would be practically useless. Okay, so uh, next thing we're gonna start walling this in. If you want to put something on top of a hopper, remember to shift click, shift click like so. Um, here, 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 here. And we'll just put a couple more over here. Now if you don't... so. We need a villager in that spot, right? If you don't know how to put a villager in that spot, I'm going to put a magical link up top on this video um, of a previous video I did about the same farm just without the transportation system. Just go halfway through and I, I'll actually show you uh, two very simple ways to move villagers. But, okay, before we move on, just uh, fill in the rest with uh, dirt like so. And it's time for us to set up our minecart. Okay, so the process of trapping your villager in this corner is fairly simple. All you gotta do is just push him in there and then just place a trapdoor up top. And that will actually prevent him from, uh, yeah, moving out or in. So uh, as soon as you have that in there, quickly place a trapdoor up top and he should be secured in there. And then you'll want to put a rail sideways like so. And then you'll want to put a minecart with hopper on top of it like that. And you're golden. Oh, that's interesting all right okay 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 so okay we don't put dirt here because this is going to go up every time uh, the machine starts working so i'm going to put a slab here just a shift click down there why um once we start chugging some food in like so this is going to go up right this is a lot easier for our farmer villager to travel around on as opposed to if you actually had uh no slabs at all Okay, so next part is we're going to wall this up. Uh, ideally, you'll want to lure your villager up here first, of course. But anyway, just uh, enclose the entire area two blocks high uh, with glass panels or any block of your choice. So it's time for us to place our composter now the reason why i actually wanted this area one block wider was so that it would be smack down in the middle well, unfortunately that's not the case because i'm an idiot so uh break this one block here uh place an oak slab over here or um, alternatively you can put also a uh you can put a trap door underneath but this would do and this will do and we'll put some dirt and we'll put this composter up top like so okay great now it's time to pull out our hoe and we're gonna start um well we're gonna 
get this ready for the crops. Okay, next step, pull out your carrots and it's time to start planting. So fill everything with carrots all the way up to the end. Okay, now we have everything nicely planted. This project, honestly, it's almost done. It's almost done. Okay, next step. This floor is basically almost done. For this floor, if you want, you can put glass panels all around it. It's not necessary since the villagers will be trapped in here anyway, but maybe for protection from pillagers and whatnot, that's up to you. Uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not gonna place anything there, uh, but you can do it if you want, like I said. Uh, well, you know what? This is basically done. Uh, probably the final step that you might want to do is you'll want to cover up the top bit with slab so monsters don't spawn on it and so uh, well y you don't want thunder to hit your villagers later on you don't want that to happen so it's a good idea to just slab up this top portion but for the purpose of this tutorial again we're not going to do that just to keep things simple um okay so i did forget to mention that we can actually put a slab up top over here as well let's just use the same one as this just to make it look good okay i guess that's it and we're gonna put our villager in here one in there great and one in here and this one is going to turn into a farmer go great he's a farmer now and we're, go we're gonna want to go down and we need to put two villagers in here um, just remember that you needed to do this beforehand so we'll put one there and we'll put another one here great okay so that's it it's done basically it's done um, there are things you can do to make the process go a lot faster so if you have like four or five maybe more stacks of carrots that will make things go a lot faster See, the way this works, uh, the reason why we're going to have to wait a while until this system actually starts is uh, quite simply, um, these villagers, they won't really give out food to others until it's needed, right? Uh, until their inventory is full and... So the reason why all these stacks of carrots will help is because it will speed up the whole process of, you know, of, of everything working out. So. Um, he needs to have his inventory full before he'll actually want to give out the food to someone else. They're a stingy bunch. Unless they really don't need it, then they start giving it to someone else. So we're going to coerce him into doing this faster. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to give out all the carrots that I have. So, um, well, we'll just do that. One stack, uh, three stacks, four stacks, five stacks, six stacks, seven stacks, eight stacks, nine stacks. Honestly, I don't even think he needs that much and well okay so he's gonna grab that food right he's gonna grab that food and once he grabs all of that um he's gonna give it to this villager here okay so let's just wait until the magic happens um since we're waiting for him to give food to that villager do remember to keep um your place nice and well lit up just make sure no mobs uh spawn inside so we're just gonna do that put torches everywhere basically we're just waiting for this guy to give food to that villager. So I'm just going to stand here and I'm going to wait. Uh, all right. Okay. I just remembered one more thing, guys. Uh, it's a good idea. Unless you already have this roofed up like so. Like For example, if you already have slabs up here. Let's say. Um, okay. You have this roofed up. Then you're safe. This villager won't climb up, jump down, and destroy some of the farmland. Now, if you don't have it roofed up yet, you can just shift click here, place a block on top of it, and that way the villager won't actually climb up. Uh, but remember, if you already have slabs on top, he won't actually climb up there. Okay, he's given more carrots now. Great. So I think he's given it like three, four times now. It does take a while, guys, because they need to have enough food to breed. Oh, 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 it's happening, it's happening. There we go, there we go. Okay. I can feel the love in the air. That's great. That's great. I think it's happening. Yep. We should have our first baby now. And from here on, it'll just go faster and faster. Okay, so we're going to come back to this bit just a little bit later. Now, I'm, I'm going to explain a few more things. 
So currently you are limited to the amount of beds that you have here. They will keep reproducing until there's no more beds to fill. Although no one is actually sleeping here, but one bed is always assigned to one villager. So you can simply just uh, build this towards the side, add more beds, uh, build this towards this side, the back side, it's up to you. But I mean, honestly, this many villagers, that's plenty. You don't really need that much. So this is okay. Now let's explain how to move these villagers that you've already successfully bred into your new farms whether it be an iron golem farm or maybe you want to do a um, a trading post i know it's not a good design but it's great for example so we're just going to use that okay so here's what we do okay first of all we need to understand the mechanics of how uh, a, a minecart works and how you can actually decide where to put one of your villagers to now for example, this guy, I already put him in there earlier. So the way we want to do this is by using activator rails. So this one I'm holding right now, activator rails. So we'll replace this and put an activator rail here as such. Now you don't need, you don't actually need glass here, but the point is once we actually put the villager in, we want him to stay there. There's no point going all the way, putting a villager there and then the villager runs off. So it's just, it's just logic. Okay. That's the first thing you want to do, and step two, you want to pick up a, a lever, a lever, and then you want to put it down there and flick a switch on it, and this will switch it on. Uh, this has to be on for it to work. Now, the way these activator rails work is that it will always kick the passenger out to the right side, okay? So if it passes this activator rail here, if the, if the cart is traveling from my direction, he's going to go out that way, to the right, into that trading post over there. Now, if a, a minecart were to come from this, direc uh, this direction here and hit the activator rail, then the villager will be pushed out to this side. But we want it going to that side. That's why, well, that's why we're doing it this way. Okay, so for example, now we're going to try it out. We're going to go here and we're going to go press the button. Now, remember, the button can be on the dispenser directly. But since we're pretending this part is over ground, it sort of makes sense to do it this way. All right, so um, without further ado, it's time to give one of them a good ride. So we press that, minecart goes up, picks him up, goes to the activator, and there we have it. Yes, the villager is in his spot. All right, so that's fine, right? We managed to get a villager into that side. So what if we actually want a villager to go into the other side of, of the rail, which is not the right side? Well, I mean, that's pretty simple, of course. All you got to do is just make the minecart hopper come from the opposite direction. So I've already set up some train tracks over here. So we'll just do that and we'll re we've rerouted this as well. Uh, this went that way earlier. It was, yeah, it was that way. Now we're just turning it around and we'll go that way. And do remember to remove the activator rail and the lever over here. And we're going to want to put that on this side over here. So replace that with an activator rail, clear that out, put a, a lever in there and flick th the switch on. Great. Now we're going to go back here so we're gonna turn this on minecart picks a villager up turns around goes here activator rail and perfect we got him where we wanted him to be great so that's it man um yes you're doing a few things at the same time but it's totally gonna be worth it this is totally gonna be worth it and yeah you'll just have more villagers than you need and with this farm you can make all the farms that you'll ever need in minecraft that requires villagers and with the rail system in place picking up a villager would never be so easy so yeah, I guess that sums up everything. Now you know how to set up a system where you can transport your villagers straight away, where you'll uh, breed up to 98 extra villagers depending on how many beds you have. And well, you also have an automatic food farm if you so want it to be. So there's actually one last benefit to this villager breeder. Once you actually don't need any more villagers, you're all good on that. Well, you can also turn this into a food farm and the process is it's, it's fairly simple. It's not complicated. All you gotta do if you're low on food and you need to get some free, uh, just chuck two chests up over here, for example. And this hopper that was facing into the suspenser, just cut that off and you'll see you know, it'll stop giving food to the villagers. And all you gotta do is reroute uh, this hopper to this chest. Just shift click as such and it's already filling in. So that's all you need to do pretty much. 
Um, but I mean, I think we'll have enough more more food than we'll need so I'm just gonna leave it as a villager breeder farm a system where you can transport your villagers straight away where you'll uh, breed up to 98 extra villagers depending on how many beds you have and well you also have an automatic food farm if you so want it to be okay it's 2 a.m. I'm done editing and recording that took way too long so I hope that was useful guys um, can I see you guys in the comments section? That would be great. Uh, just uh, say hi, whatever you want. Just tell me if it sucks or if it's all right. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching till the end. And I hope to see you guys next time. Uh, do consider subscribing. And yeah, well, thanks for being here, guys. See ya. Master Bro signing out.